Just open up the box in the room. The acoustic energy travels through my filtered air much easier. Right. Stop scrolling away with your mouse on that store. I see you. Shopping for that new speaker or DAC. Oh, wait, I think that was me. Well, clear out your card and listen to these six tips, as well as six audiophile hack jobs to avoid at all costs before you go out and waste your money. Oftentimes, we're just searching for something different, and that different sound or improvement may be as close as a junk drawer away. Okay, on to tweak number one. This is also one of the cheapest. Let me ask you a few questions first. Do you have any components that move around on your desk easily? Do you have a sub? Do you have things that shake? Cabinet doors, knickknacks, shelves, mirrors and walls, anything like that. I can almost guarantee this is the case. And the answer is actually this magic audiophile putty, $299 per ounce. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually blue tack. And it's less than $5 for more than you'll ever need in a lifetime and it actually works. I put it on my cabinet doors in my office. I put it under light components on my desk. I even put it under knickknacks on shelves to keep things in place so you can really just keep things quiet. If you wanna test all the vibrations you're likely dealing with, just look up a low frequency generator on YouTube and walk around the room. You might find out that half of the subsonics that you thought you were hearing in the movie was a picture frame of your grandma's birthday. Thanks, grandma. Another place I really think this is beneficial is under a bookshelf speaker. I have heavy sand filled stands and if I want the speaker coupled to it, just simply ball up four pieces and it's locked in. I've even read some really interesting ones here with users using blue tack to seal their headphones around their ears. That's a bit much for me, but at the same topic, I, I do find that it works really well for cleaning the small filters on IEMs. How this is gonna work today is I'm gonna feed you one useful tweak, uh, then a hi-fi hack job, back and forth. You don't wanna miss some of these. One of the main things to look for in the hi-fi hack job area is if a company has to tell you directly that something is audiophile, it probably isn't. Hi-fi hack job number one, high price network cables and switches. My rule here is generally don't buy the cheapest, but simply buy the name brand with the features you need on things like switches and routers. Surely don't buy anything high priced claiming it to be something it's, well, really not. Cables, just get your average cables. Follow the latest standards that your gear actually supports. On to tweak number two. Don't buy new equipment, just listen at night. I've heard a number of explanations here, some a bit out there and others plausible, but basically the rundown here is a good number of people feel their system sounds better at night. And the general consensus comes down to a few things. First one would be ambient noise. There's a lot of ambient noise during the day, a lot more than we may even realize. During the night, the general noise floor drops and like other pieces of audio equipment, as the noise floor drops, the cleaner and more revealing a song can sound. This one makes sense. Maybe not for the person living alone in the woods, but someone in a larger, more metropolitan area. There's a lot going on during the day. Traffic, construction, your kids are awake. The second thought is how our brain perceives sound at night. Possibly an increase in sensitivity here. This one is very hard to prove and maybe more in line with psychoacoustics. Either way, if it sounds better to you, it sounds better to you. The third thought, which I feel is the most unlikely, is the power grid has a lot less use at night and we're receiving cleaner power into our homes as the network is less congested. I'm not really so much buying this one, unless maybe you lived in a country or location with a very poor power grid. Who knows, maybe at night you close your curtains and block out a reflection coming from the speaker. Your wife installed room treatment with the new curtains and she didn't even know it. So to enjoy this one, simply just turn off that 220 volt welder, turning up the power in your living room, crack one open and relax for a bit. If you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing. It makes a huge difference for my channel. Comment below on your favorite hacks as well. Stick around for those hi-fi hack jobs too. Some real doozies in there. Hi-fi hack job number two, and this one is one of those doozies. Selling a piece of wood or boxes of dirt and using the words quantum anything. This one is wild to me, and I almost wanna start a website selling wooden boxes full of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, krypton, hydrogen, and xenon. In other words, the air we breathe. Just open up the box in the room. The acoustic energy travels through my filtered air much easier. Right. On to tweak number three. This one comes in a number of varieties, but these are supposed to be, you know, tweaks, and I don't want them to be strangely expensive options here. And this is for isolation and decoupling. There's a lot of products out there for turntables, speakers, and subs. 
platforms, spikes, isolation discs, really all kinds of things. But did you know you can just simply buy a set of washing machine isolators for things like your subs? They make these rubber pucks and they keep your washing machine from vibrating, as well as cutting down on the vibrations transferred into your floor. So it's pretty obvious to see how something like this would really work. You know, when you pair it with a sub or a large pair of speakers. They might not say hi-fi on the package, so you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. Another budget-friendly option is Sorbethane. It comes in all shapes and sizes, pucks, discs, sheets. I've used these a number of times on speakers, as well as under turntable feet. This material decouples on a budget better than anything that I've used. I swear this stuff basically eats energy. And if you want an expensive looking platform for your turntable or speakers, just grab a cutting board that fits this size and install the correct size sorbethane puck for the weight of the equipment you're putting on top of it. And you basically just saved yourself $500. On to hi-fi hack job number three. Audiophile rocks and stick on gemstones, things like that. The benefit is obviously a more refined top end, of course, more airy. Get rid of those stray EMIs and increase that resolution. And if you didn't know, blue gems are obviously for mids. I have no idea what's going on here. And if you really want to go this route, I will sell you all the rocks you want. Okay, back to the good news. Hi-Fi tweak number four. Understand how to tune the sound with speaker placement. First thing I want you to look at is how close the speaker is to the front wall. Too close and your bass may overpower the room. Excessive bass energy is only going to make your mid-range and treble sound a bit more compressed. I have no doubt that many seek this sound out, and if that's your taste, that's fine too. But what I would suggest if you're not going to measure this out with something like Rue, is to pull them out into the room a bit. Let them breathe and open up. Have them pulled out as far as acceptable for your room, and then simply back them up until you reach the sweet spot. Without measuring, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Play it by ear, and just find the sound that suits your taste. It is going to sound different, and you may not need that new pair of speakers. If you desire something with a little more bottom end after you pull them out and loosen some of that bass, just introduce a sub and properly integrate it into the path, rather than add coloration to the speakers with too much bloat. I also understand most of us can't pull our speakers way out into the room because, well, most of us are dealing with a hybrid space, not a dedicated listening room. So just pay attention to port locations, things like that next time you make a purchase to best find the speaker that fits your space. If you want to take this a step further, you can find loads of technical videos on how to properly configure your listening space. To give you the one minute lesson on it, an equilateral triangle is paramount to give the best soundstage and imaging. Widely gap speakers will increase the soundstage, bring them closer together, and you increase the center image. Find the optimal relationship between these with fine tuning of distances. Next step is placement in your room. Speakers too close to the walls and corners will excite the bass frequency range, and in some cases sound a bit bloated. Best placement is generally the distance between the speakers and the wall behind them should be one third the length of the room. As this is next to impossible for many, just pull them out to something acceptable for your space. On to hi-fi hack job number four, cable risers. By rising cables off the floor and keeping them away from each other, improvements in detail, resolution, and spatiality can be obtained for a more satisfying listening experience. I don't even have a problem with cable risers, but let's call it what it is, a cable stand to make cleaning your floors easier. The only realistic purpose I can see here is less dust bunnies collecting on them. So on that front, sure, get them. On to hi-fi tweak number five. This one kind of relates back to number two, listening at night. So many products today have a screen, and as far as most consumers are concerned, bigger the better. And I can't knock this because I generally fall into this category as well. When I look at the Hi-Fi Rose screen, I honestly just want it. But what I'm going to tell you now is to shut it off. And that may seem strange that turning off a display could increase fidelity, but depending on how they have it implemented, it could be increasing the electrical noise within the product. Measurable or audible? Well, I'll leave that one up to you. I would say no in most cases. I personally feel it comes down to simply less input for our brains. Basically just relaxing and focusing on what we really came for. Will I do this all the time? No, not a chance. Most of the time for me, it's give me those screens, but there's certainly something to be said about a dark, quiet space, which I'm not certain if I've heard in seven years, which coincidentally coincides with the first of our three kids being born. Here's a quick hi-fi hack job, number five. Cables with batteries to reduce EMF. Sorry, can't listen to music tonight. I forgot to charge up my speaker cables. Hi-fi tweak number six, and this is our last one before we get into the final hi-fi hack job to avoid. 
Make your own speaker cables before spending absurd amounts of money on pre-mades that may or may not boast unproven and unreal results. I recently put out a video on this, three cable builds at three price points. I would suggest to check that one out after this video if it's something you're interested in. You can go as simple as you'd like here. The DIY route definitely can be budget, but easily does become expensive depending on what you're looking to build. It can be a slippery slope. This isn't so much a tweak, more so just something to consider. You really don't need to pay someone else for something that you could easily build yourself with likely better grade materials. This one doesn't have to be just speaker cables either. You can easily build your own RCAs, coax, sub cables, anything like that. And if this isn't up for you, continue to use that lamp cord or Walmart jumper cables. Really no skin off my back. And here's a little secret. All of them will sound about the same. And our final hi-fi hack job. Lacquer treatments that claim to help produce a more open and colorful sound by applying lacquer to things like the cones of your speaker. The only way I can see this working is you're possibly inhaling too much of the lacquer. That's it. Now go do something about it. Build a speaker cable or start stacking rocks in your living room. Whatever floats your boat. Please take a minute to like and subscribe. Let me know your favorite hacks as well as some of the worst products that you've ran into. Take care and I'll talk to you later. Bye.